Welcome everybody, thank you for being here in another video of this continuous training program by Jugando Atrendo Editorial. With this video we are closing a cycle of professional development where we refresh our knowledge of education and also learn new trends that favor our teaching work. In this video we will talk about teaching through games and how they can become a tool of a stimulation and activation of the students' brains to optimize their learning abilities and reach better results in our teaching work. We will learn a little bit about GLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning, that refers to teaching subjects as math or science through a foreign language, English in this case. We will focus on the teaching of math and how can we develop the abilities of counting, number and numeral association, group and identify quantities. Let's begin. What is CLIL? According to Umberto Lesca, CLIL is an approach or method which integrates the teaching of content from a curriculum subject with the teaching of a non-native language. CLIL is important because it helps learners to develop skills to communicate ideas about different subjects like math, science, music, art, etc., increasing the student's vocabulary and conversation abilities. CLIL has four basic components called the four C's. These components are content, communication, cognition, and culture. Content. In CLIL, the English language is a vehicle to teach knowledge, skills, and understanding. It refers to concepts, themes, skills, vocabulary, and facts as part of the cognitive development and intercultural understanding. For CLIL, content is a tool to develop the necessary language skills for the acquisition of a second language. In this case, uh, we are talking about content when we talk about what they have to learn in math, in science, in art. Los contenidos programáticos que los niños pueden adquirir a través de diferentes materias que se eh, aplican en este caso en idioma eh, extranjero, que es el idioma que los niños están aprendiendo. Communication. In CLIL, students use language to learn, communicate, externalize, and internalize understanding. Here, the language acquires three dimensions. Language of learning. Here, we consider language as the vehicle to communicate knowledge in the form of vocabulary, lexis, phrases, expressions, and sentences that we use to explain the content of the subject. El lenguaje que nosotros utilizamos, todo ese vocabulario, todas las palabras, las formas en que nos comunicamos para explicarle al estudiante los contenidos de una materia. O en el caso de los chicos de preescolar, las destrezas y habilidades que ellos deben ir eh, desarrollando en el proceso de aprendizaje. Language for learning. We use the target language focusing on learning contents to give students the necessity and motivation to learn it. Como los chicos se ven inmersos en un ambiente en el que se está utilizando el idioma inglés todo el tiempo, entonces ellos se ven con la necesidad de adquirir ese vocabulario necesario para poder expresar sus ideas eh, dentro del proceso de aprendizaje de las materias que está aprendiendo. Language through learning. It happens when students apply what they learn about the target language to support and enrich learning. They use their communication skills with a purpose. En este caso, los estudiantes van a utilizar todo lo que ellos van aprendiendo en sus áreas de lenguaje para poder aplicarlo eh, en forma práctica dentro de sus clases eh, o dentro de las de los diferentes materias que los chicos van eh, relacionando o van aprendiendo en el idioma que queremos que ellos aprendan. We can summarize these ideas with the phrase learning to use language and using language to learn. Eh, aprender a utilizar el lenguaje y utilizar el lenguaje para aprender. Eso es lo que hacemos en el método de CLIL. Cognition. 
It refers to development of the student's learning, thinking, critical and creative skills, enhancing their cognitive skills in a meaningful learning process. En este caso estamos hablando de todas las destrezas de cognición que los niños pueden desarrollar a través del estudio de diferentes áreas como matemáticas, ciencias, arte, música, aplicándola por supuesto a el segundo idioma que estamos aprendiendo. And culture. This is the link among the other elements and sets the context for learning. These elements refers to citizenship, community and values. Aquí vamos a entonces a, a integrar todas las áreas que tienen que ver con la cultura del estudiante y la cultura del idioma que estamos adquiriendo. Vamos a hacer una fusión entre estas dos culturas para poder darle un contexto al contenido y a las destrezas que están desarrollando en cada una de las materias. In the preschool curriculum, the subjects are conceived with a global and interdisciplinary criteria. One of the objectives of preschool is develop learning skills to support subjects in elementary. These learning skills are language, oral and writing, visual and auditory perception, moral values, hygiene, motor, motor logical thinking, emotional and social skills. That is why CLIL integrates all these skills in didactic units, developing through each of them vocabulary and knowledge that will support specifically subjects as science, math, art, geometry, language, etc. Following this path, the Fun with English program organized the development of skills in 10 to 13 didactic units. School, colors, toys, shapes, opposites, space and earth, body, clothes and weather, animals, transportation, family, house and pets, food, community helpers, and also in levels one and two, the program dedicates a section to develop counting and writing the number skills. En este caso, por ejemplo, cuando estamos hablando de shapes, no aprendemos únicamente el vocabulario de identificar las distintas eh, figuras, sino que también desarrollamos habilidades de eh, espacio, de identificación de forma, de identificación de color, eh, que van asociados al proceso de desarrollo de las habilidades del cálculo. También, por ejemplo, si estamos hablando de space and earth, Vamos a eh, trabajar no solamente el vocabulario relacionado con esta área, sino también contenido de contexto que va a relacionar ese vocabulario con eh, el contenido que se debe desarrollar relacionado con el área de las ciencias. Our program, as we show in previous videos, promotes habits, emotional intelligence and social skills too. And with the different didactic units, students also will learn knowledge about science and math. Because we are using a foreign language to teach subjects, we need to use teaching techniques that help us to make students understand without translation. Here is where games acquire an important role to help students to learn through sensorial experiences. In this case, sensorial experience become a universal language that students' brains can understand and build from them mental ideas that support the new language. What is a game? A game is a structured form of play. 
usually is used as a form of entertainment, but is also an educational tool. Games provide educational experience because they combine sense perception stimulation and different emotions. Kids are always ready to play a game and teachers need to be prepared to propose games that allow them to practice the abilities that they are learning in class. Preschoolers need to learn through games because of the stage of their thinking development. To build mental image, they need to touch, feel, taste, smell, and see all around them. Games are the perfect way to help students to build neuronal roots because they offer two elemental requirements for this purpose. First, multisensorial stimuli. If the information comes to the brain from several senses at the same time, the brain will process that information with priority. Games often stimulate more than one sense at the time. And emotions. Games are always emotion generators, excitement, anxiety, happiness, astonishment, confidence are some of the emotions that games can produce. When sensorial stimuli are associated with emotions, the information becomes significant and causes an impact in the brain, producing what we know as learning. Con la combinación de la estimulación multisensorial y las emociones generadas por el juego, creamos experiencias de aprendizaje significativo. Los juegos son además la forma natural en que los niños y niñas aprenden, especialmente en la edad preescolar, donde el juego simbólico forma parte del desarrollo emocional, intelectual y social. Los maestros debemos estar todo el tiempo innovando nuestro repertorio de juegos para invitar a los estudiantes a poner en práctica todas las destrezas que es necesario que desarrollen mediante la práctica. We can also achieve other benefits when we teach in through games. By example, games are agents of innovation. Para los niños y las niñas no hay nada más sorprendente que el juego. Descubrir nuevos conocimientos a través del juego es una aventura en la que todos quieren participar. Students prolong their concentration time. Para los niños y las niñas preescolares, mantener su proceso de atención constante requiere un esfuerzo mayúsculo dado que su cerebro está tratando todo el tiempo de desarrollarse a través de lo que los sentidos están captando de su alrededor. El juego logra captar la atención de todos sus sentidos y con ello alargar el periodo de atención. Students develop social skills. Todos los juegos desarrollan habilidades sociales. Esperar turnos, eh, controlar sus emociones, ganar, perder, frustrarse, etc. Games encourage collaborative problem solving. Especialmente los juegos en los que logramos que haya una unidad de equipo. Los niños y niñas estarán más dispuestos a esforzarse por resolver las problemáticas del juego. Games induce creative and divergent thinking. Algunas veces... En los juegos es necesario cambiar de roles y con ello logramos situarnos ante nuevos escenarios que deben resolverse. Los niños y las niñas a través del juego pueden incluso inventar soluciones fantásticas o mágicas para distintas circunstancias, lo que envuelve al juego como una herramienta para el desarrollo del pensamiento divergente. Games appeal to different learning styles. Los juegos estimulan todos los sentidos y por ende favorecen a todos los estilos de aprendizaje. Games help students to retain the main point of the lesson. Precisamente al estimular al niño y la niña a través de todos sus sentidos, es más fácil que él retenga, comprenda y evalúe la información y tome decisiones a partir de ella, procurando un aprendizaje que es más profundo. Students get engaged with their learning. El juego es la forma en que todos los niños y niñas se expresan. Por lo tanto, lo que sucede en el juego lo procesan con completa seriedad y se comprometen con su propio aprendizaje. Students use their language skills. Lo más importante cuando estamos hablando de aprender un segundo idioma, si los animamos, los estudiantes van a ser capaces de poner en práctica a través del juego las habilidades de comunicación que han ido adquiriendo. For the teaching of English as a second language, we can classify games in four categories. Games to listen. In this category, we can group games 
where students need to follow oral directions. The action of the game depends on the ability of the student to listen and comprehend instructions. They can be individual games or group games. Some popular examples are uh, Simon Says, The King Asks For, Walk and Stop, The Boat is Sinking, Splatting Words, Lottery, etc. Uh, we also have games to talk. In these games, dialogues and words are the most important. Students to participate need to use their voices. With creativity, we can adapt many games adding a little dialogue that students need to repeat to participate. Also, we can classify here the circle games that use songs or chants, hand games uh, where students repeat a chant or poem, etc. Some examples are Ring a Ring of Roses, that is a circle game, the telephone game, um, it's the same in Spanish, Telefono Descompuesto, Rock, Paper, Scissors, um, Riddles, Charades, War of Thumbs, etc. Games to read and increase vocabulary. In this group of games, students practice their ability to read words or instructions. Also, we can classify here those games that involve ABC, build words or phrases, match pictures with words, etc. Some examples are words memory match, bingo, go fish, read and write maze game, and scramble. Games with numbers. In these games, students will use numbers and math skills like addition, subtraction, counting, follow patterns, and sequencing. Some examples are games with dices, card games, dominoes, bingo, hide and seek, one, etc. One of the most important skills to develop in preschool is the number sequence and the counting ability. Counting objects help to establish the quantity awareness and other skills related to the notion of numbers necessary to form a mental image in preschoolers' brain and initiate the mathematization process. The, math no, the mathematization process is the process to translate the abstract concepts of math in concrete concepts that preschoolers are allowed to process because of the stage of development of their brains. The preschooler's brain is a pre-operational brain that needs to see, hear, touch, smell, feel, and taste to understand the situations that happen around them. Through the number line, kids develop the ability to count and follow patterns to make sequence of numbers. The students learn to count one by one, two by two, five by five, ten by ten, etc forwards and backwards. This ability prepared them to understand other mathematical concepts like addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Also, students practice to find numbers in the sequence, find uh, the follow and the previous number in a sequence, and determine the distance between two numbers. Based on the CLIL concept, we can develop the number discrimination and counting skills at the same time that we develop mathematical vocabulary and other language concepts related with it. Before to use uh, the number line to play, students must be familiarized with the number sequence one by one. To develop sequence skills, we need to begin stimulating students through their through their bodies, and after that we can use manipulative objects and finally pictures and graphics. Let's review some games and activities to develop the number sequence in the number line. Um, by example, counting the sequence. Before to counting number sequences, students need to be able to follow patterns with their body, colors, and shapes. There are games that need to follow a counting sequence like jump in the rope with chants. This is a traditional game where kids jump the rope following a chant to count uh, jumps that they can make before to mess up. Eh, los chicos van a utilizar una cuerda de saltar para poder ir contando los saltos que hacen mientras desarrollan también habilidades de eh, lenguaje, de pronunciación, eh, de dicción 
porque van a ir repitiendo ciertas eh, cancioncitas, ciertas rimas que ellos pueden ir haciendo antes de empezar a contar. Eh, some chants to this game can be Down by the river, down by the sea, Johnny broke a bottle and play, blame it on me. I told ma, ma told pa, Johnny got a spanking, so ha, ha, ha. How many spankings did Johnny get? Let's count jumps and find the bed. One, two, three, four, five, and, and students begin to count how many jumps they can make. Another can be red hot pepper in the pot. If you taste it, will, you will burn. Jump the rope and do not stop until you will mess it up. One, two, three, four, and they begin to count. And another game is roll and count. For this game, we need a dice and cards with pictures of kids doing something activities like jump, clap, stomp, snap fingers, etc. By turns, kids roll the dice and take a card. All the kids do the action picture in the card the number of times that the dice shows. Kids must count like in a choir. One, two, three, four. Uh, in the middle, that they are making, they are making the action. Eh, aquí podemos utilizar tarjetas, por ejemplo, de nuestra cajita Montessori que traen los verbos. Entonces podemos imitar los verbos que están en esas tarjetitas la cantidad de veces que muestre el dado que está, con el que estamos jugando. We also have hopscotch. Uh, hopscotch es el juego eh, que nosotros tradicionalmente le llamamos avioncito. This is also a traditional game. Teacher draws the hopscotch the hopscotch pattern on the floor and number each square from 1 to 10. Acá los chicos van a utilizar eh, algún objeto como prenda o como eh, marcador y entonces ellos van poniendo su prenda en el primer número, pasan saltando del 1 al 10 mientras van contando 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 y luego de regreso backwards eh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 eh, y cuando vienen de regreso recogen su prenda. A la siguiente vez la colocan en el 2 y así lo van colocando sucesivamente. El que se va confundiendo le va dando turno al siguiente chico. Cuando eh, hay alguno que logre pasar y llevar su prenda hasta el número 10, pues será el ganador del juego. Once that they learn to count the sequence of numbers, they can begin to count over the number line. You can build a number line using fun puzzle maths. This number line can be used in class to different activities like make a line to get into the class. The students can be invited to jump on the number line counting before to get in. Place backpacks. Students can follow the number line to set their backpacks in order. Uh, jump and count. When students finish their work, you can invite them to play in the number line counting and jumping on the mats. You can set in the classroom other kinds of sen sensitive materials like circles with texture pasted in a wall with the number line on the top. Kids can touch, uh, they touch them and count them. And the sens the, la sensación que van a sentir ellos en su mano mientras van contando les va a ir haciendo también eh, atravesar por ese proceso sensorial que va a aumentar eh, el impacto que tenga ese, eh, esa estimulación en sus cerebros. Now we can ask for kids to begin the sequence in numbers different than one. We can play the next games. Follow the dice. Eh, con un dado, los chicos van, eh, alguno de los estudiantes que tenga el primer turno lanza su dado. Entonces eh, van a ver el número en el que cayó el dado y se van a colocar sobre la recta numérica en el número que el dado indique y van a empezar su conteo desde ahí. También luego después, ya que lo hemos hecho varias veces en la recta numérica, lo podemos hacer sin la recta numérica, que los chicos hagan el conteo eh, simplemente eh, en su mente, ¿verdad? Para que puedan ellos también ir traspasando esa parte de lo concreto a lo más abstracto, en este caso no tan abstracto porque estamos hablando también de un conteo en el que podemos utilizar paletas, podemos utilizar botones, podemos utilizar cualquier tipo de eh, material de conteo. Ex Hunt. Este juego también eh, podemos utilizarlo con eh, huevitos de plástico. Adentro de esos huevitos podemos poner diferentes números y eh, esconderlos alrededor de la clase. 
se les invita a los chicos a ir a eh, buscar su huevito y cuando ya todos tengan cada uno un huevito, los van abriendo por turnos y tienen que empezar su lista de conteo desde el número que el huevito indica. Por ejemplo, si dentro del huevito de un niño está el número 6, entonces ellos deben empezar el conteo desde el 6. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Si en el huevito está el número 10, ellos empiezan su conteo desde el 10. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 etc. Also, you can practice count following the rhythm of a chant, saying to the students in what number you want that they begin the count. When students master the sequence and can count from any number, you can challenge them to do it backward. You will practice with them counting backward all the time they need to reach automatization. At this point, it's important to remember that different levels push students forward in the number sequence. Level B uh, of the program, of the uh, Fun with English program, uh, take kids from 0 to 5. Level C, from 0 to 10. Level 1, from 0 to 35. And level 2, from 0 to 50. For students in the last two levels, we can divide the number line into portions from 0 to 10, then 11 to 20, then 21 to 30, etc. Finally, they can reach the last level in counting skills, identifying the next and previous number. To practice this skill, we can play different games like next and previous dominoes. Con un dominó regular, lo utilizamos de la misma forma en que se juega el dominó, solo que en lugar de ellos tener que hacer un match del mismo número que tenga su ficha de dominó, ellos deben colocar el número que sigue después o el número que sigue eh, o que está antes de el que muestra la ficha. Step back and step forward. Este se juega también en la recta numérica. Le pedimos a los niños que eh, se sitúen en un número cualquiera y luego la maestra le dice step back, el niño da un paso hacia atrás, o si le dice step forward, da un paso hacia adelante, y entonces el niño debe decir el número en el que está parado sin verlo en el piso, o sea, sin voltear a ver hacia el piso. Lo podemos hacer también con una venda en los ojos. Eh, también tenemos hot potato, es eh, el juego normal de papa caliente que todos conocemos, eh, pero mientras ellos están escuchando una pieza de música y se van pasando la pelota, el chico al que le queda la pelota, la maestra le dice un número y él debe decir el número que viene antes y el que va después. At the same time that we play with kids to develop counting skills, we also need to teach them other mathematical skills like number and numeral association, quantity concepts, many, less, more, same, grouping objects, classification, patterns, and in the level two, additions and subtractions. For all these skills, we need to have in our classroom a kit with accounting materials like buttons, seeds, foamy shapes, foamy numbers, cards with pictures, dominoes, tokens, plastic tokens, building games like Legos, wood sticks, etc. With those materials, the student can play different games like count and build. The count and build games um, es un juego en el que vamos a utilizar las habilidades de conteo de los niños, pero vamos a utilizar también su asociación con un numeral. La maestra en este caso va a mostrar una tarjeta con un numeral y los niños tienen que contar esa cantidad de objetos eh, que sirvan para eh, construir. Por ejemplo, en este caso pueden ser legos o tronquitos. Entonces, eh, la maestra muestra el número, los niños toman esa cantidad de tronquitos o de legos y deben construir alguna cosa que la maestra les haya dicho previamente. Por ejemplo, si ella dice un castillo, o si dice un carro, o si dice una mesa, ¿verdad? Eh, tratando ellos de eh, utilizar las piezas, la cantidad de piezas que la maestra mostró para formar su figura. También tenemos el juego Show the Number. En este caso eh, va a ser un poquito al revés. La maestra va a utilizar una tarjeta en donde, donde se muestre eh, una cantidad de números, ¿verdad? Eh, por ejemplo, eh, no va a mostrar el numeral, sino que va a mostrar la cantidad en eh, Puede ser eh, 
figuras geométricas, puede ser puntos, etc. Y eh, pues los niños lo que deben hacer es ver la tarjeta, contar la cantidad y luego ellos deben mostrar el numeral eh, con sus números de FOMI que corresponde a la cantidad que ellos contaron. We use CLIL method to develop language skills at the same time that kids learn abilities and knowledge from different subjects. In CLIL, we take advantage to, of the academic knowledge to practice the second language, especially when we live in a non-English speaking environment. CLIL has four components called the four C's. Content, communication, cognition, and culture. When we think on these components to prepare our classes, we integrate the teaching of a second language with the student's academic, cultural, and personal development. For CLIL, language is a subject and an object. It's what we want the students to learn and the tool to make them learn more than just a second language. In preschool, CLIL integrates all the skills in didactic units. In our program, these units are organized in 10 to 13 themes. The level 1 and 2 also practice math skills, counting and writing numbers. To support language learning without using translation, we use games as tools to build mental image in the students' brains through the creation of experiences. Experience is a sensorial stimulation with an emotion associated. We use the experience to make an impact in students' brains and reach significant learning. Game help, um, games help students to build neuronal roots. They provide multisensory stimuli and generate emotions. In ESL, we can use games as tools to practice listening, speaking, vocabulary, reading, writing, and mathematical skills. We reached the final of the teacher training program for this school year. We hope that all the information we share with you along this program has arrived into your classrooms. Our objective is to make a positive impact on Guatemalan education and the learning process of all the kids using our materials for their integral development. Also, we want to be part of your development as a professional teachers leading you to the most vanguardist methodologies and techniques that you can apply in the benefits of your students. We wish you a successful ending of school year and we will be waiting with more innovation for the next. A warm greeting from all of us, the team of Jugando Aprendo Editorial. See you soon.